It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Anne Ganguza. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Anne Ganguza, and today I am very excited to bring the founders of the National Association of Voice Actors, or NAVA, to the show, Mr. Tim Friedlander and Karen Gilfrey. Welcome, guys, to the show. Thanks so much for joining me. Hello, hello. Hey, thanks, thanks for having so us. Thanks so much for having us. We're excited. Well, I'm very excited to talk to you about this brand new initiative, which I think is only, what, a month or two old? A couple months, yeah, a few months. So tell me, what is the National Association of Voice Actors? National Association of Voice Actors is a national association of voice actors. We made the title <laughs> nice and simple to keep it. It grew out of some groups that Karen and I have put together over the last, I started mine in 2014. I believe, Karen, you were around the same time, 2016 2015, or so. yeah, something like yeah. that. And these groups we have, uh, you have the voice actors of NYC. I have Gardner Street, VoiceOver Collective, various other groups I'm involved in, and over the years, we talk about business, we talk about how to get into the into SAG after, we talk about what it means to go FICOR, we talk about various other different parts of the voiceover industry. Currently, that conversation is around synthetic voices, so we're having that conversation in our groups as well. And we decided we want to take that to a broader audience, and so we kind of took this off of Facebook and put this into a national group that we could offer education and support and financial support to on a much larger, much larger scale. I love that. In addition to that, too, over the past few years, Tim and I have also, through our groups, been kind of creating emergency funds and donation funds for people in the voiceover industry. Particularly during the pandemic, my group and Tim's various groups, we had emergency funds set up for people who lost their jobs during the pandemic or who just needed extra money to pay bills or get a new microphone because there's broke and they didn't have any money to do it. And so we were giving out payments to people, no questions asked, without having a nonprofit. And so we thought that by forming a 501c3, we would be able to do that in a much better way than just having a PayPal account and paying it out to people when they asked. Absolutely. Exactly. Now, it's membership driven. Is there a fee to join or can we join free? How is that working right now? Currently, it's brand new and we have a membership committee that is going to be setting those standards for us on mm -hmm. what that will be. Currently, it's free to anybody who wants to join. And so there will always be a free membership tier that people can access the information. We definitely, we want to be a resource for people who are getting into the industry to find a trusted area for information. So we'll have a free tier that our membership committee will set for us. And then beyond that, there will be dues at some point, but we don't have that currently in place. Talk to me a little bit more about the resource-driven initiatives that you have. You mentioned before resources for the union or for FICOR or for non-union people. What's that look like? Sure. We're currently calling it pathways, okay. different VO pathways that you have. And a lot of people think it's very black and white. It's either union or non-union. Right. And in voiceover, for many of us who work in this industry, know that it's very gray. There are non-jurisdictional jobs, which means it's not covered by a union contract. So what does non-jurisdictional even mean? Mm -hmm. What jobs are non-jurisdictional? What can we work on? How do we join the union? If a voice actor wants to be in the union, what do they need to do to get in that union? I was eligible for two years before I even know I could join the union. I didn't know I worked under a contract that was a union contract. I didn't even know I worked under a contract. So <laughs> I didn't mm -hmm. know I worked under, you know, I worked under an after contract for an audiobook that made me eligible. And two years later, I was trying to get my eligibility and I was already set. Wow. I didn't know these things. Mm -hmm. And then also this concept that you can convert jobs. You can take mm -hmm. a job that is currently non-union and convert that into a union job. So a lot of voice actors look at this concept of joining the union as having to give up all this work that I do in the non-union sure. realm. And for a lot of people, that's not a tenable situation to be in where you're going to be giving up a massive amount of money your entire living that you support your family with to move into some place where you may not even have access to auditions and jobs. So we're going to show, we want to provide that information on how can you navigate this industry. If I want to go union, this is what I do. If I want to go FICOR, this is what that means. If I want to stay mm -hmm. non-union, this is what it means. And the union is great when you can reach them and their information is very solid when you can reach somebody over there. But mm -hmm. they don't deal with voiceover specifically. And voiceover, for everybody who knows, is such a very unique niche aspect of sure. what sag after and the arts industry and community in general is, that we want something that's very specific to just voice actors. Mm -hmm. Very important. We also, we have an incredible advisory board of just 
people from literally every genre of work that there is in voiceover. We made a point of asking people from audiobooks and video games and commercials and TV narration and all just across the spectrum of voiceover so that we have people advising Nava on all of those Mm -hmm. different aspects. And we have people as part of our advisory board who are very important people in SAG-AFTRA who are very pro-union and want everyone to join Mm -hmm. the union if possible. We also have people on our board who are FICOR, and we have people on our board who are non-union. Our goal is to be voice actor first and to be as unbiased as we can be as a group and just provide accurate information out there for people to have. Because I think sag is absolutely wonderful, mm-hmm. but when I called and was trying to figure out whether I should join or go FICOR, I called them and I didn't feel like the information that I got about joining the union and converting work specifically, they basically didn't tell me that I could convert work. Mm -hmm. And so I really thought that I was going to have to give up every non-union job that I would book in the Mm -hmm. future. And it's mostly just because I think people are unaware that it's possible to do Mm -hmm. that. This group, we hope, is a resource for people with unbiased, accurate information that's very voice actor Mm -hmm. forward. I think that's so important because I know there are so many questions when people get into the industry like, what is the union and how do I become eligible for the union? Should I join the union? And it's always those questions that you're right. The information has not been really readily available anywhere to find out that information. And it's complex. And so the different avenues are, I think each one of them has a special set of circumstances and there are advantages and disadvantages to whichever way you decide. And I think having a resource to provide that information to voice talent is so very important for that. So that's a wonderful initiative. And especially things like, I know that you've started something for healthcare, or Mm -hmm. you're attempting to try to lobby for voice talent that if they don't have healthcare, they can get it. Talk a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something, you know, for anybody who is, those who are SAG-AFTRA and have health insurance Mm -hmm. and SAG-AFTRA, they know the benefits of having that access to phenomenal healthcare. And one of the things that we learned after forming this group that we did was that there is a possibility of providing healthcare for members of our association. And that is about the extent of the the Mm -hmm. information. (laughs) It's about as far as we are in this this process. I started working on it before we actually had a group in this capacity. And I started in November of last year. I had been in discussions about possibly offering this for a year before that, and it was actually kind of put into motion in November of last year, and is just, for anybody who's dealt in healthcare, it's just a convoluted process of oh, yeah. misinformation and different information and and what information is accurate and what information is inaccurate and and changing, changing laws. laws. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, and it's such an important component for mm-hmm. us yeah. as entrepreneurs, right, to have yeah. Yeah. health insurance. I know we don't like to think about it like we could ever need it, but I'll tell you, when you least right. expect it, you could really use that health care, and I know that firsthand. Yeah. And I was yeah. thankful that I was yeah. able to have health care, but it was through my spouse. Mm-hmm. So, right. and for those yeah. people that, that may not be an option, this yeah. is a wonderful initiative, and the best of luck with that. I think that's phenomenal. That's that's something that's very important. We look at it as, you know, I've, I've always thought of it as one of the things that can help advance people in their career. Mm-hmm. And it can help get you into that level where you are able to get union health care. It mm-hmm. can get you to that point, you know, the more work people can focus on. I've always been somebody who, in all my spare time, I personally don't want to wait tables to support my career of being an artist. I want to yeah. be an artist. Sure, and absolutely. I'm a musician all the time, mm-hmm. and I want more people to have access to doing the art that they want to do and love to do and make a living at it and not have to stay in a job they don't want. This is one of Karen's talking points that she yeah. brings up quite frequently. Absolutely. Is, you know, this, this concept of staying in a job you don't want to be in because just purely because you need the health care. Yeah, Absolutely. And being able to have the income, right, coming Mm -hmm. in so that you can be confident in pursuing more work. And so I've always been, you know, a big proponent of have that little bundle of cash. And if you're spending that cash Mm. on something when it goes wrong on healthcare, the whole thing kind of crumbles. And so I think it's important to have something like that put in place so that you can pursue your creative career and grow in it. We're just in the process of building that. So we... Mm-hmm. Just don't have, we don't have answers yet that are fully formed for us to give rates and to give who's going to be covered mm-hmm. and how it's going to be covered, which is why we're here today talking about this. Sure. And help from people to, you know. Because we do have a plan of action. 
Yes, and I tell let's you hear the plan of action. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Great. You can see we have an infographic up on our website, which is navavoices.org. And you can see it's called, I think, The Road to Health Insurance. You'll see a little map on there. But basically, the idea is we as an association have to come up with a pool of applicants who would apply for this health insurance. The health insurance companies want to see who are these people, you know, what is their average age, where do they live, Mm -hmm. those kinds of questions. So we have a health insurance census and we are hoping to get 800 to 1,000 people to mm-hmm. add their information to the census. Once we have that pool of applicants, that's when we can go to all the different health insurance companies and say, here mm-hmm. we are. This is what we are. This is what we do. Our job is very low sure. risk. We're not like mm-hmm. construction workers or even on-camera actors have a more dangerous job than we do. We're literally sitting in a booth right. talking into a microphone. It's not very dangerous work. So this is who we are. They look at the full group and they say, okay, these are the rates. These are the plans that we can offer you. Then we choose which plans we think would best suit the needs of our members. And then during the open enrollment period this year, November and December, hopefully, fingers crossed, if all goes according to plan, we will have options for people to be able to purchase that health insurance, which will then start January of 2023. So the main thing right now is that we need as many voice actors who are interested in having this health insurance option to fill out the census. And also, I should add that if you are on the census, you have the ability to purchase health insurance in November and December. If you're not on the census, you will not be able to purchase health insurance Got until it. the following year. So the next year. enrollment. Yeah, until the next enrollment. So, so if you have even like a little bit of interest in... Maybe this is something that I might Mm want to consider, depending on what the rates are. Fill out the census so that when we do get those plans and those rates, you will have the option to buy it if you want. Yep, and you can look at the compare rates when offers come around. And if it's not right for you, then there's no obligation to sign up on our plan. No obligation. Um, But Mm -hmm. again, to reiterate, if you aren't on the original census and the rates come out and it looks like something viable you would want to get into, you wouldn't be able to join until the next open enrollment. So we definitely encourage everybody who is even just slightly and should want to compare rates. Yeah, There's absolutely. even a question on there about mm-hmm. how interested are you? I'm just comparing rates. You can mm-hmm. check that section so we know that you're somebody who is just kicking the tires and just trying to compare rates. Fantastic. Just to clarify, you must be a voice actor in ah. some capacity in order to be a member of NAVA and or qualify for this health insurance. So Full-time or part-time or in some capacity? Paid jobs? Full-time, part-time doesn't matter, just in some capacity. Yeah, paid jobs. We're working on what the vetting process is going to be because we don't want it to be like an earning threshold. It's not going to be like sag after where you have to make $25,600 or whatever it is, almost $26,000 in union earnings to qualify for health insurance. Mm -hmm. It won't be like that. It will be like a vetting process where we'll see, oh, this person has a website. Mm -hmm. Oh, this person has a demo oh, this person has done a little bit of VO work, they qualify. Or, oh, this person has a profile on Voice123, Mm -hmm. they're probably doing some work as a voice actor, they qualify. And again, we don't know what that is yet, but it will be something like that, not an earning threshold. Yeah, and that kind of goes in parallel with what the requirements are going to be for the health plan. Like, what level of connection does this group have to have between its members in order to show that they're mm-hmm. part of a single group of association. So it all fluctuates, but we do, we, we have a membership committee who is handling that for us and that we'll have something in the next, hopefully the next mm-hmm. month or so, that will um, have some information on what different membership tiers will look like and what those dues will be and, and what, the, what will be offered for those people who have different tiers. Fantastic. Now, as I look at the front page of your website, you have some lofty goals, which I really love. Mm -hmm. Not only the health insurance that you just spoke about, but also you mentioned Mm -hmm. earlier financial assistance through scholarships and emergency funds. And I think that that's a really wonderful thing because prior to having this group put together, they were kind of uh, all over the place. And I know at one point long ago, I offered Mm -hmm. scholarships through Rio Peeps. And so since then, there have been other groups that have offered scholarships. And of course, there's the Brad Venable Fund, which is amazing. Talk to us a little bit about what your plans are for that. I love having it in the central place. Yeah, you know, as I said, kind of some part of this started with us 
based on this financial aid that we were offering to some of our members in there. And the kind of the foundation, what got the Nava started in the early part of the year was we received a donation from Bev Standing and Rob Siglin Paglia. After Bev's TikTok lawsuit was settled last settled. year, they donated their mm-hmm. GoFundMe money they had raised to the Brad Venable Scholarship into that fund. And that became the foundation of what started Nava. That allowed us to pay for the lawyers, pay for all of the incorporation, pay for the things that we needed, and also allowed us to put a decent amount of money aside into a basis for a fund, which provided three full scholarships to VO Atlanta for three voice actors, which covered tickets, Mm -hmm. covered airfare, covered lodging, covered food for the entire duration of the time they were there. So we were able to cover all the expenses out of that fund. We also have been able to use that fund going forward to help some people, a little bit of money here and there. It's currently not public because we are still setting it up. And we have to wait until all of our final paperwork mm-hmm. gets through for us to officially be fully sanctioned to do the things sure. we want to do. So currently it's on yep. hold, but we will be able to take donations, mm-hmm. which will be tax-deductible donations, so voice actors can donate to the group. We have a lot of people who, over the years, have just donated here and there. Somebody books a good job, and they turn around and donate a little bit of money to the fund just to help mm-hmm. have. Our group, I think we've probably done forty or $50,000 in the last 18 months to two years. Out of our group, Karin has done you know something similar along those lines. Yeah, same same number from my group. Yeah, and for a lot Mm -hmm. of voice actors, we all know, you know, two hundred dollars here and there sometimes is the difference between us getting through the weekend and not getting through the weekend, or a client is late on paying, or something doesn't come through, or we do a lot of ACH. You know, we do direct bank transfers, and your deposit gets made, but it's not going to hit until Friday because it's a holiday. So sometimes just that two hundred dollars gets somebody through the weekend, gets somebody through the next twenty four hours, the forty eight hours until something comes through, which we all know is small business owners and as cash flow is tough sometimes, it's those are the little things that help. And we help a lot of people in that little way that that we want to continue doing. Fantastic. Now, you also have education Mm -hmm. and inclusion. So speak about education, resources. That's Mm going to be on your website. You're going to also thinking of hosting classes maybe or workshops or NAVA meetings that uh, you would provide that. Yeah, I think we'll probably do a Zoom every Mm -hmm. month or so for our members about various topics, but also we are kind of partnering with different resources around the voiceover community that provide Mm -hmm. educational Mm -hmm. materials. Exactly. So like GVAA, for example, um, is... VO Peeps. Yeah, and (laughs) and VO Peeps, yes. I'm going to have VO Peeps, VO Boss. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes, and VO Boss, great. Thank you. No, but the GVAA rate guide Mm -hmm. is definitely something that we are fans of, and so that is part of our website. And SAG-AFTRA has a lot of educational Mm -hmm. resources that I think people don't, when they go to the website, it's not like totally 100% clear exactly where it is. So we can have links to those on our website. So people can just find a central place where you can go where if you have a question, you can look up that information on our site, information on converting work. Mm-hmm. other things like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. And there are lots there's so many great coaches out there that we can we want to help support and advocate for those who, who we know are trustworthy, who we know are great to work with different people. And also, I think Karen, I've worked with most everybody in the, in the Los Angeles area. I know who are some great people to work with, who personalities. One of the great things, you know, a great mm-hmm. coach is a great coach if they're the great coach for you. Some people work better with other people, and we know these things. Sure. We can help, help guide somebody into a great mentorship with a great coach or a great group of people who are offering classes and things along those lines. So that's kind of where we're looking at and promote. You know, and the Vorg is coming the back. Vo- the Vorg is coming. The Voice Over Resource Guide. The is, Vorg. The Vorg. Yep. I am on the Vorg. Yeah. The Voice Over Resource Gotta Guide goes to print. Well, it's 4.30 on a Friday afternoon, hopefully tomorrow. When we go to print tomorrow, we have to. Wow. We're going out. That's incredible. The Vorg was all there was back in, see, now I'm going to date myself, but the (laughs) Vorg was all there was back, Mm -hmm. I want to say, in the, was it the 80s? It's the the voiceover industry's oldest publication since 1988, and actually up until about four years ago was the only printed publication in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. And when I saw that was coming back, I was so excited to see that. Also now an online version as well, so absolutely. Yep. Yep. Recommending the best of the best in L.A. and New York and yeah. fantastic stuff. So yeah. get your copy of The Vorg. You can pre-order, right? Pre-order Absolutely. the printed copy, yep. which, hey, who doesn't yeah. love 
Who doesn't it's, love a good book? Uh, my stack of voiceover resource guides right here. Yeah, so. I was gonna say, do you? Have, I don't have one. I don't have one with me, but I yep. do have one. Mm, yeah. So yeah. fantastic. Awesome. Talk a little bit about. I know you mentioned mm. this in your in your meeting the other day. Mm. Inclusion and diversity, and how mm. you support that. Yeah. So we are also partnering with kind of the people in the industry who have formed groups that are really interested in in representative mm-hmm. casting and authentic casting, and so. Queer Vox and the PGM list are two groups that we are partnered with. Maria Pendolino is also starting a new group for disabled voice actors, which we will hopefully be able to be a part of. It's just about supporting all of our colleagues and supporting the voiceover industry and moving toward this authenticity and representation that I think we all are it's about mm-hmm. time and absolutely <laughs> and excited absolutely. about so yeah so that's something that Nava is supportive well, of fantastic and, and hopefully to be, to be able to take that next step and be able to then educate and work with casting directors and productions on what this means to cast authentically earlier in the process so it's not a not an afterthought or something yeah, that's absolutely. happening either when it's too late or when it becomes too difficult to find what's needed authentically well, congratulations, guys. I mean, what a Thank beautiful, you. wonderful initiative and resource for the community. Thank you so much on behalf of oh. the bosses <laughs> out there and everybody in the community for putting in the work. I know, again, I date myself, but I know how much work you're putting in, especially I had my own 501c3 mm-hmm. back in the day. So yeah, good luck with that. And really, thank you so much for everything that you're doing for the community. Oh, well, thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you so much for having us today. It's great to get the word out. And the VO Boss is fantastic. And thank you for all the work you're doing. Well, thank you. With all of your podcasts and information and all of that. It's just fantastic. So thanks for having us. Well, thank you. So that website, Bosses, is navavoices.org, N-A-V-A, voices.org. Any other links I need to be shooting out to people? That's our main link. Yep. The census is on the front page of the website. So if you want to take the census, go there, click, and you're in. That's it. (laughs) To the census. Awesome. (laughs) Yes. All right, bosses, sign the healthcare census and become a member now. All right. Well, thanks again, guys. I'd like to give a great big shout out to our sponsor, 100 Voices Who Care. You guys can have an opportunity to have your voice make a difference. You can find out more at 100voiceswhocare.org. And of course, to our sponsor, IPDTL, you too can connect like a boss and find out more at IPDTL.com. You guys have an amazing week. Thanks so much for joining us this week and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL.